Here are 20 tips and tricks for Adobe Illustrator. To resize an artboard, click on the artboard tool here, then type in the dimensions. You can hit tab to go to the next box. This will resize the artboard, but what if you wanted to resize the artwork with the artboard? Let me undo that and then just click this button to scale the artwork with the artboard and then type in the dimensions. Here's how to create artboards that are the exact size of your artwork. So say I want these three flowers to also be on their own artboard. To do that, go to the artboard tool. If the artwork has multiple pieces, make sure that it's grouped. Then hold shift and select the artwork. There's an easy way to split up artboards into their own files. This is especially useful if you're importing files into After Effects. Only one artboard is gonna show up when you import the Illustrator file into After Effects. So to split artboards into separate files so there's only one artboard per file, go to File, Save As, and then navigate to where you wanna save the files, hit Save, and then on this next screen, you wanna check Save Each Artboard to a separate file. Now each artboard is in its own Illustrator file. To add additional artboards, go to the Artboards panel and hit the plus button. If you have a bunch of artboards and they aren't arranged nicely, you can rearrange them easily. In the Artboards panel, hit this button to choose how you want to arrange them. You probably also want to have checked Move Artwork with Artboard, and then click to place those rearranged artboards on the canvas. If you have a bunch of artwork hanging off the sides of your artboard, it could be nice to see a cleaned up version. Go to View, and then Trim View. If you're importing your artwork into After Effects to animate, this will also show you what's going to be imported. Sometimes it can be helpful to see multiple views of your artwork at once, like a zoomed in version and a full version. To do that, go up to Window, New Window, then go back up to Window, Arrange, and then Tile. Now you can zoom in on one side, but still see the full artwork on the other side. This way you could make changes in the zoomed in view and see how it looks in the artwork as a whole. It can be helpful to rotate your artboard depending on the artwork that you're working on. To do that, go to the hand tool and click and hold to find the rotate view tool. Then click and drag to rotate your artboard. You can hold down shift to snap to 15 degree increments. You can also use this drop down menu, which makes it easy to reset the artboard to zero. If you try to add a gradient to text, it doesn't seem like it works. The trick is that you have to go to the appearance panel and then click this button to add a new fill. Now you can apply the gradient and make any adjustments. If you see a font that you like, you can take a screenshot of it and then drag that into Illustrator, then go up to Window, Retype, and then click Find Matching Fonts. This will give you a few different options of what the font might be, and you can download the ones that you like from Adobe Fonts with this button. Here I have some type on a path. I want to add almond milk down here. What you might do is copy and paste the existing type on a path, and then move it with these controllers, change the text, and then I need to flip this over. There's a controller here to flip the text, but now it's on the inside of the circle. So instead of resizing it like this, because that's going to also resize the size of the text itself, here's what you can do instead. So I'm going to undo that and instead go up to type, type on a path, type on a path options. Make sure you have preview turned on so you can see what you're doing. Then check flip and then switch it from baseline to a sender. I want to extend all of these lines. If I were to use the direct selection tool to select all of these points and then try to drag them out, it's going to be really hard to maintain that same angle. So what you can do instead is make sure that you have Smart Guides turned on and then just do one line and that way it'll tell you if you're extending the line. And then once you do that, select the other two points and hit Command or Control D. If you have multiple copies of the same artwork, you can edit all of those copies at once. So I'm going to select this tree, go up to Select, Start Global Edit. That's going to select all of the trees and then I can zoom into the original one that I selected and make a change. Then once you click out, it'll make the update on all of those different copies. Curved shapes like this otter's body, hands, feet, and even tail 
can be really hard to draw, especially when they have an outline around them like this. So here's what you can do instead. Say I want to create this paw. I could use the pen tool to create a curved shape and make sure that it has a stroke and no fill. Then go over and increase the stroke weight and give it round caps. I want to give this shape a stroke, but it is a stroke. So what you can do is go up to Object, Expand, and then hit OK. Now this is a shape with a fill and no longer just a path with a stroke. So I could give it a fill and stroke. To get this opening in the stroke, I'm going to remove the stroke from this shape and then copy the shape and paste it right on top, so paste in place. Then on this top copy, I'll grab the stroke and then I can cut with the scissors tool, which is C on the keyboard, and then delete this section of the stroke that I don't want. To create the otter's body, I did something similar, but instead of using the pen tool to draw the path, I used a circle. You can turn shape layers or lines into guides, so let's turn these circles into guides by hitting Command or Control 5. This makes it so that you can easily snap things to the guides. To hide or show your guides, do Command or Control colon. To make a dotted line, first draw a line, increase the stroke weight, and then turn on dashes. Set the dash to something low, like 1, and then add round caps. Adjust the gap to adjust the spacing between dots. You can also use the stroke width tool to taper the dots. If you click into any value field, you can use the up or down arrow keys to increase or decrease the number. If you hold shift, it will go by tens. And if you hold command, it'll go by decimal places. You can also type math into value fields. This works in other Adobe programs too, but one thing that works in Illustrator that doesn't work in After Effects is that you can put in percentages. So just make sure you delete the pixels and you can put like 50% and it'll do the math for you. In the layers panel, if you grab this circle icon and drag it onto another object, it'll copy the appearance onto that object. The catch is that it has to be things that appear in the appearance panel. So for this text, nothing is appearing in the appearance panel. So if I were to do this with the text, nothing happens. So in this case, you'd want to just use the eyedropper tool. If you double click on an object, it'll enter you into isolation mode so you can focus on editing that object. To exit isolation mode, you can click this gray bar or a faster way is just to double click anywhere. Learn as many keyboard shortcuts as you can. When you know the keyboard shortcuts, you can focus on illustrating and eliminate a lot of clicks to make your workflow more streamlined and efficient. I've got a free cheat sheet of keyboard shortcuts you can download. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Happy illustrating.